Just a few days ago, I posted this absolute atrocity on Twitter, and there were many people curious to what the hell it is. Right here, I have all the random wires, cords, and components to make myself the Franken-Naz. An absolute atrocity that actually worked pretty well. It's all gonna be powered by this Zima board, and the whole point of this little project was to actually test the SATA connectors and power on the Zima board to see if it works. Additionally, a company called Icy Doc sent me an email trying to send me something to review, and I had absolutely no use for anything on their website, but I have a problem with saying no to free tech. Thus, they sent me this thing. What this is, is a trayless 3.5 inch hard drive enclosure. This right here is the specific product page. You can see it right here. It's technically supposed to go in a tower computer like this, but I figured why not just try to zip tie a Zimma board to it. This over here is the Zimma board. It's about $200 for the eight gigabyte model, which is the uh, minimum RAM requirement for true NAS, which is what I'm gonna be uh, trying to use to make it into a, a NAS. But then I ran into my first issue. When I got this, I realized this uses the standard 15 pin SATA power. And two of them, mind you, not this uh, single four pin SATA power that is on the Zima board. So that's when this guy comes in. This is a two millimeter four pin to 15 pin hard disk drive SATA power adapter. This is the product page, it's currently unavailable. I couldn't find one that splits off to two, so I needed another adapter. We have a simple 15 pin Y splitter. This is two male ends, this has a female and two male ends. Plug this into the four pin, and then there we go, we have our SATA power. Now I'm not too knowledgeable on electricity, currents, watt hours, anything like that. This Zima board only inputs about 12 volts, so my initial worry was that this that simply wouldn't work. Because not only does it have to make the hard drive spin, there's actually a fan and a couple lights on this little enclosure that it needs to power. But believe it or not, it was enough power. Let's tilt this down a little bit, shall we? So here's the atrocity. We're just gonna plug in the SATA power. One right here, one right here. And now we, of course, need some data transfer. Now this is a three bay, the Zima port only supports two. So I went with the top one and the bottom one just so there's a little more airflow in between them. Plug that in there, plug that in there. So there's our back end looking pretty good. These right here are some Iron Gate NAS hard drives. They're four terabytes. They're what I have been using in my NAS. Well, my main Synology NAS. And I do kind of like how this is trayless. You just go ahead, whoop, plug her on in, do the top one and plug it in. Now the Zimba board actually has a proper cable to do this. This is their cable. This side is for the Zimba board. We have the four pin, we have two of the data transfer cables, and then on this side is for the hard drives. And this right here is why I couldn't use this for the enclosure. Now to make our little mount. I do use bigger zip ties, so this is all I got. I had the perfect amount too. There we go, look at that. It's beginning to look like a proper NAS. And then of course, if we go ahead and plug this on in, we've got some life and some pretty good airflow. Now, before we go any further, I do need to take a little break to thank the sponsor of today's video. Exter and their smarter wallets, bags, and accessories. Their wallets have a quick release mechanism that fans out all your cards, saving you time and effort. The wallet I've been using is called the Parliament, and it's a wallet with a semi-traditional fold and a very nice leather build. Feels great, quality stitching, and right here on the front has a little band so you could either put some bills there or one of their optional smart tracking devices. If you don't want to use their tracker, they also have wallets that have the perfect spot to place an Apple AirTag, and if you don't like the leather wallet they have other ones such as this metal card holder and many other items in different colors and styles and of course it doesn't just stop at wallets i've been using this key holder quite a bit and they also have bags phone cases and much more and right now you could take advantage of their winter sale to get up to 40 percent off this holiday season just use my link down below or the discount code tech hut and with that oh i just noticed that there's a little thing to uh, adjust the fan that's nice so that picture I posted on Twitter, the reason I had it hooked up to a screen and I had Ubuntu up, I just opened up GNOME Discs 
to make sure that they were actually showing up. They were. And I went ahead and tested out the installation of TrueNAS, which used to be called FreeNAS. If you don't know, it's one of the best open source solutions for network attached storage that you can use. I had a little bit of trial and error getting it to install on this thing, but I did eventually get it to install on the built-in eMMC flash storage and boot up and all that. So going forward, this is the process. So booting up the Zima board here directly into the USB that we flashed this on, I used Etcher. It's gonna take us to this little splash screen with some options. We're just gonna let it run and go ahead and boot into the true NAS installer. Now in here, we're gonna have a couple different things we could do. We have install and upgrade. We could go into our shell, reboot our system, or shut down the system if we would like to, but I'm gonna go ahead and install it. Now up on top here, we could see our two four terabyte hard drives. And then below that are the three different partitions available for the eMMC flash storage that we have on our Zima board. Now I tried to install it over all of these partitions previously it did not work so I went ahead and selected the very first one select OK and since I did test this in the past it's gonna ask me if I want to upgrade or do a fresh install if this is your first time installing, it's not going to ask you this. So I'm going to go ahead and pick fresh install. And then we're going to go ahead and format the boot device. Then it's going to give us a quick rundown. We're going to proceed with the installation and then go ahead and type in a password. Now from there, we have the option for UEFI or BIOS. Now I did try to do this with UEFI, but it's having issues booting. So this time I went ahead and selected BIOS. And then from there, it's gonna begin the actual installation process. This takes about 10 minutes, so just let it do its thing. And when it's all done, you're gonna see TrueNAS installation succeeded. So from there, I'm gonna go ahead and shut down the machine and pull out our disk. Now the splash screen is gonna look similar, but this time it's booting into TrueNAS that is installed on our Zima board. And the first boot takes some time, and for some reason it did this for quite a while, but ultimately it did complete the setup here. We have a few options on the actual machine itself, but at this point, we're gonna go ahead and use that IP address listed on the screen there and log in to the web portal. For the username, that is going to be root, that is the default. And then you're gonna to wanna to put in the password that you typed in when you actually set this thing up. So let's log in. And here is the true NAS dashboard on the Zimba board. So we have our version here. We have some CPU usage here. It's using about a percent or zero. Uh, our memory usage. So it looks like we're using about 2.2. Our interfaces, there are two of them on the Zima board, so we have our main internet right there. And yeah, so far it's looking so good. I just wanna make sure that those drives are still gonna be showing up. So we could go over here under storage, disks, and yep, there they are, awesome. So what we're gonna do real quick is actually try to uh, make it shareable, make an SMB and all that. So we need to start off with a pool. So let's add a new pool, create a new pool, create pool and select those two drives we installed. Boom. And then from here, there's only two drives, so there's not gonna be much when it comes to the um, actual RAID type that we could go ahead and select. Since there's only two drives, I'm just gonna go ahead and mirror it, so if we do lose a drive, uh, all the data will be recoverable from the other drive. For the name of this pool, we're gonna go to Zima Pool. You can see I was kind of playing around this earlier. I don't have too much experience with TrueNet, so I'm trying to learn it as I go here. Let's create that pool. Confirm, it says all the content added to the disks will be erased. That's something to note if you're doing this. And I will note this isn't a tutorial. I, there's much better tutorials of people who know a little more of what they're doing. I'll link to the one I use down below. There we go, our first pool. So now what we need to do is actually add a data set to our pool. And you just do that, add data set. And uh, sticking with kind of what we're doing here, I'm gonna call this Zima Data. We have some more options such as the compression level and all that, but I'm gonna leave this as is. Let's go ahead and submit that. And there we go. So now that we have that, we need to go ahead and create a user. So let's go accounts, users, and let's add a user. And here we go, full name. I'm gonna fill this out real quick. All right, so I filled out full name, user, my password, the group ID is gonna to default to a thousand, new primary group, uh, directories and permissions. So let's give myself access to uh, Zima data here. And all this is looking good. We have Microsoft account here. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and allow this, but I don't think my usernames are gonna match up to actually use this. Uh, let's go ahead and submit. And actually, I'm gonna go ahead and go over to storage or pools. This data set here, let's go ahead and edit the options. Uh, no, that's not what I want. Pools, boom. I think it might be permissions. There we go, owner. I'm going to make myself the owner, Brandon. And then we have all the various permissions and all this looks good. So let's save that. And now I'm the owner of that. There we go. So now I'm going to apply user and apply the group, save that. There we go. Now let's create our SMB share, shall we? So sharing, Windows shares, 
add a new share. Let's go ahead and go with our Zima data path. We'll call it Zima data and submit that. And from here, new ACL, let's configure now and go with restricted, continue. And all this looks good. I'm the owner, so I should be able to access that and save. Theoretically, now let's go ahead and connect to it. Uh, let's open up this. First, I'm gonna see if it's just gonna show up. Ooh, there it is. Let's see if this works. Ah, no. There's probably a way to fix this, but I don't know enough yet. Let's go to this PC and add a network location. So next, next, and this is Windows, so I need to use backslashes instead. Uh, I think it's 192.168.0.32. And then I'm pretty sure it's uh, Zima data and okay. Oh, it worked. So I'm just gonna call this Zima Data TrueNAS server, make this look a little prettier. Here we go, next, and open this location when I finish. So there we go, here is my user folder. And now let's go ahead and uh, move some big files and test her out here. Uh, we have some TrueNAS and Ubuntu right here, pretty large things, so let's see if my uh, data transfer speed is what I'm expecting. So let's drag and drop that in there. Ooh, that's painfully slow. Ooh, basically 10 megabytes a second. Um, but I did just screw up my Wi-Fi drivers. If I screw up, I reinstalled Windows and I know something's off. So what I'm gonna do is find some uh, better conditions real quick and uh, test it there. So what I did is I went and got my laptop that has Pop! OS on it, plugged it directly into my router. And first I'm testing out uploading a file directly to our Zima data folder. And we can see that upload speed is just under 100 megabytes per second. Now copying the file and pasting it back into our local machine, saw speeds just under 90 megabytes per second. Now for what I'm used to, for example, with my Synology NAS, this is basically on par with what I've been getting when it comes to overall data network transfer speeds. So for this little jankity setup, I do have to say, I'm gonna have to give it a pass. Additionally, they have this over here. I could have attached an NVMe SSD to it and just installed TrueNAS on that. But I mean, overall, this is a kind of a fairly decent solution. A lot of NASs ship with Celeron processors anyway. I mean, spec-wise, this is pretty close to what we've kind of put together here. Let's see how much it is. Yeah, this is a little bit of a jankity setup, but it is technically a better value. So with that, I'll go ahead and link to all this stuff down below. You can use the Zima board for a lot of things. The reason I like it versus like the Raspberry Pi, Orange Pi, any of those, is it's a x86, so it's not a ARM CPU, so there's a lot more uh, software availability for it, but it is a Celeron. You win some, you lose some. With all that, I do hope you all have a absolutely beautiful day and good bye.